All right. Play around. Oh, I should probably not have that up there because it'll yell at me for copyright infringement or something. Uh, no music out there right now because I'm going to just listen to the music in my headphones because I can do that. Uh, I should do this. So just going to mess around. I was like, where did that go? Uh, maybe I should have done all this stuff before starting a stream, but whatever. It's fine. I just wanted to get it going. Oh, I guess I should set... Um Get my checklist going. And here, did all that, did all that, did all that. Do I want to take Stream Notes version two? Sure, why not? Something weird is going on with like the gap in my teeth not the top one not the big one the, the one whoops i just did two i just did three i didn't mean to do that I'm thinking about making like my site is all text files and i was thinking i could actually just keep it all in nvalt and just have it work that way that might be interesting. Um, let me get rid of that while I'm thinking about it. Um, ah, whatever. It's fine. I'll get it later. No, let's get it down. I get better at the get it now stuff. Where is that? I don't go into that directory very often. Um, That'll take me to the directory, I think. Nope, it bounces it back. I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, nope. I really don't know where I have it. Is it in Woodshed? I forgot what the site is. I would like to be able to share this music with you. That is one of my goals. Stream notes 14.3 goes away. That's not really a thing. I hit the wrong button. Ooh, look at this. I wonder if it's doing that rendering. Whatever it is, it's kind of nice. I don't know what the last app I installed was. Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna hook up my better camera and then I can have my eyes feeling weird too. Everything about me is just weird right now. Um, just in a, bleh, just kind of the mood. So this is just gonna be whatever. Boom, 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 boom. You can't hear that at all. All, all. all right, so I deleted the link. What else was I going to do? I was going to do something. There's foam. I want to get to that in a second. I feel like I was going to do something else first. Oh, yeah, Twitch. That's the whole reason I went here.
How's your listening history? Ah, oh, I wonder if that's in the API. What I was looking for was this link. That's what I should do with my links most of the time, is just hacking and chatting. Well, though I guess I've got some things that I do. Hey, better. Oh, I don't actually usually look at this when I'm streaming. I didn't even do this before. Need to retake the word hacking for whatever. This person said hi. And then I don't know how long I hung out. I've got no idea how long people are in chat. I don't know if you can see that or not. I guess I could watch viewers. Oh yeah, zero viewers. I could probably keep the viewer count going. Look at that. Don't care. Don't need it. Oh, my music just totally freaked out. Mute channel until I turn it back on. Don't need that. I got in a Discord that's really cool. There's like a whole bunch of people like doing really cool stuff in here. Yeah, so the other camera. Following this already? Tools help to increase the leverage building our streets of public through pressure to find people to solve their problems. Where be the link? I don't know what MDX is. I don't know what MDXJS is. I don't know how all these people are. We're just gonna open tabs like a madman. Oh, it's a transcript. I don't want a transcript. I want. Ogrom looked interesting, but it's like a or org orgrom. It's apparently a Emacs thing, and I'm not quite ready to learn Emacs in order to use a text wiki. That's good. Oh, I need to bump the font. You know what? We're gonna do regular size tonight. This is gonna be the size that I actually use. Yeah, close enough. Anyway. Uh, I'm looking for sector tools. I mean, language and abstracts and why. In order to ensure a vibrant ecosystem, community tooling needed to ex exist for formatting, learning, and plugins. 
This requires a foundational specification of our syntax tree so that parsing is probably handled before transformation of JS view. MDX as a format can be implemented and parsed in a number of ways. See, this is all, this is, everybody's doing the same thing. I love it. That may, let me be clear. Like, I love it. That's awesome. Like, um, uh, sign notes, miss, whatever. I love this idea of digital garden that they've been talking about too. MDX is an authorable format that lets you seamlessly use JSX in your markdown documents. You can import components, interact with and export metadata. This makes writing long form content with components a blast. Yay. It's MDX in action. Here's a chart. Chart. It is marked down for the component error. Let you write JSX embedded inside markdown. What is JSX? I mean, JavaScript something. Not that. I need to learn React. An open Oracle format that uses seamlessly write JSX in your Markdown documents. See, that's super cool. That is super cool. So that's been one of the things with, so like NVL, the app that I use, right, for all this stuff. It's all just straight text, which is awesome. But like putting stuff, oh yeah, that'd be really cool. I wanna see the sector tools. Where'd that go? Where did sector tools go? You still haven't shipped your box. <laughs> I'm really interested in this. So section tools looks like it's going to be an online thing.
No, oh, this is that's funny. I picked up the same thing. So where is it? Must he must not have a. Yeah, and it sounds like they're making it. Um, it's actually going to be an app app. So that's really cool. But it's also we had a pull request. Hang on a second. Oh, what's toast? See, I'm seeing all this cool stuff. Like, oh, it's neat. Let's toast.dev. This is the ES mod modules based Jamstack framework for pre building large websites. I need to learn React. I feel like there's a hidden link here somewhere. No, Sector Tools, is it? Nope, CLI. Wait. What does the Dr. K et cetera monarchy tooling look like? People don't seem to follow with the bezel. Oh, I should keep some of this stuff open. Why not? Oh, I know. So I was going to do Visual Studio Code. We're going to bring that font size down for the evening. Font. Font. That's not bad. Oh, why is that line showing up now? I swear that, is it just because it was Python? That line wasn't there a minute ago. Hang on. What was it 20? What was I doing? Now it's there. Get ignore. No? I swear that line wasn't there at some point. And I liked it better without it. You know the text files there. What's happening? All right, so let's go. Open this and see what it does. Yes, please. Mark down links. Cool. Wow. 
whoa, it's doing a bunch of stuff. I think this means it's still going. I don't have a good insight into what's happening right now. Installed, installed. What does this 7 do? Collapses it. Oh, okay. Gray matter, a pair of color schemes, mark down links. Mark down notes. Markdown on one, I need for markdown. Why is this, why I have two windows open? Can I get rid of one on? Or I can make another one. That was the opposite direction. Let me close this. Close all, close saved. I just wanna close it. Oh, there's a little X's, they were hidden. Oh, neat, it's got a header thing up here. What is this, uh, this, 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 this? It's like a mind map thing. Keeping the graph open and using an alternative to explore from change of time to time. Graph reflections automatically every time you update a markdown file change, whatever concepts. Title is always the first thing. Files which do not have a title do not appear on the graph. The extension contributes the following. Markdown links, show columns. Controls in which column should the graph appear. It messed with my theme though. I don't like that. Wait, KT. Where's my high contrast? High contrast. There we go. I dig it. All right, so that's markdown links. Foam for VS. Read the foam documentation. Do you want code to open an external website? Yes. This is where I got was earlier. Features foam doesn't have features or traditional sense out of the box. You have access to all features VS Code and all the recommended extensions. Which is to use. But discover what what's up to you discover what you can do with it. Called adventure. A bunch of people have been working on it. So 
So the question, so the question I have, so like in VR, right? I go control L, pi, bang, whatever. Um, file exists, that's yes, right? So, and then I look and I've got, here's unit test for file exists. I've got delete a file, check if a file exists. That's what I want is the speed of how to get to that stuff. So does, find in files, nothing's happening. Uh, foam. But if I have to like, yeah, MVL's just got this beat, like, Yeah, so that's really what I'm looking for, right? Is and if I can, if I want to create a new file, like whatever Python CLI tools, enter, and then I'm there. Does it have? And then so what I could do, right, is you could make f text expander formats. that would turn it into blog posts or just posts, pages, right? So like blog posts are like the order of the things, but you could set it up to just be like, they're just links on the site. They just go places, they go to things, right? Um, Yeah, like, I don't know, I, th I think I could actually manage, manage the site in here. It would take a little bit of rejiggering. And so you could just, yeah, you could just watch the folder, watch for changes in it, parse it. So it would be, it would take, it would take some doing. Because there's like 3,000 files in there, so it would take... Well, so how long does grep take across the grimoire? So, grep, IRL. Draft. Star. WC dash L. 60. Okay, see that went really fast. Like printing out the stuff looks like it took longer. Um, that's really interesting. Because the content tree for, see that's super fast. I wouldn't have images.
that would be one thing that you'd have to deal with. But that MDX, let me look at that again. Hmm, okay, yeah, I need to dig into this more. All right, let's uh, see if this, like, this is super interesting. How do I get back to those? Read me. repository I don't like this it's like not moving all the letters at the same speed I can me notes from new inline wiki links Use wiki links, backticks, and tags for fast navigation between NARP. Bring some awesome features from apps like notational velocity to VS Code, where you also have one Vim key binding and two excellent extensibility. Syntax styling on a complete. Go to definition, peak definition. Tags, new note command, provides a command to quickly create a new note. You can bind this to keyboard show and keyboard bindings, screenshots. I don't have to click on stuff though. And like links aren't really my thing. Backlinks Explorer, okay. Syntax highlighting, sure. Peek and go. Again, this is all about the linking stuff. I'm not, I search, I don't link. Find all references, find all tags. New note command. Yeah, what I want to search though. Fair color schemes for writing markdown and sublime text for her. Takes a set of cues from popular management writing apps. Keyboard shortcuts, table contents, markdown, HTML, math, nice. Get 
should have flavor markdown math. Yee. I don't really want to have to think about the links. Get lens. Don't know why that's part of this. Prettier code formatter. Still didn't really tell what it did. Okay. Yeah, no, not interested. Like you it's just gotta it's gotta beat the speed of, of NV Alt. Of finding and making. And like that's nothing's doing that yet. Can't wait for it. How's it NV Ultra looking? Coming soon, promise. It's, it's said that for a little while. Your notebooks can include any kind of file, image, task, whatever, whatever you need. All typefaces, all sorry, all types are indexed by name and can be dragged to the notes as links or images. This is super ambitious. Actually, I wonder. My boom is in the way. Boom. What's going on? Why not scrolling? I'll leave that open for now, just so we got them. Um, okay, whatever. We're going to do a little coding. We're going to make. Oh, wait. So when I opened that, did it close the other one? It's kind of a bummer. Snake case names. All right, new file. Um, user bin environment Python 3. Change that old font size again. Fong font. See, look, the line's not there. Wait a minute. It's there. I don't know how. What are the color themes? I wonder how you edit material icons. Change the saturation of the icons. Values must be less than or equal to one. Okay, so 
point two. One, whatever. Unos. Nope. What I'm looking for. How do you do? How do you edit the themes? Settings. No. All in service settings. Extensions. Do those install? Git lens. Okay, so they installed everywhere. I forget this case. I just wonder if it's like project specific or whatever. I'll install Postgres. I'll install Vim Emulator. Bring all the plugins. I don't want to mess with key bindings yet. I'm not sure enough what's going on. Oh, Jupyter Notebooks. I think I already got that. Yeah, I'll play with that at some point. Um, Preference color theme. Kate he to get there. Select the theme, press enter, right. Customizing a color theme. You can customize an active color theme with the workbench cu color customizations, editor token customizations. Set the colors UI. There's the street file export. So there's some widgets. If editor, blah, blah, blah. So settings, and then we're going to what? Workbench. Settings editor. Color customization, color. Gotcha. Wait a minute, it just opened. Somehow I was just in there and let me do a thing. Look at all this stuff. Oh, well, next to the minute. Okay, so somehow I have to make my own theme. Whatever. I'm going to get rid of that line at some point. Later. Anyways, import. Args parse. Args parse? What was it? Python CLI. 
Oh, click is the one as that first one that came up. That's why I saw it first. That's why. But for what I'm doing, I can just get away with parse args. Plus, I like not having to install a module. Arg parse. Arg parse. That's it. Oh, they don't link to it. I should totally link to it. Nope. Oh, it thinks it's text. It doesn't understand that it is Python, even though it says Python right there. How do you give it a, to let it know it's Python? Let VS code know a file is Python. VS code treat file as Python without extension. Whoops, the wrong thing. What would be awesome is if I could actually have the music, the speakers going. That's what I really want. They're all COBOL, so now I mainly change their association to COBOL. But I was looking away for VS Code to treat files without extension automatically. I know you can add associations in the settings, but the only thing that works is to star. How do you change the association? I'm like, I'm okay doing it individually. I don't see. It's funny, I spent so much of my time doing like newbie stuff. Language support, associate file types into VS code. No extension. There we go. Thanks to the closing of issue, expose change languages command and the development of like mode lines. We can now use Vim style mode lines inside files without suffixes of VS code can detect them. Example post commit. What was this? 2018.
2019. Long parenthesis P, change language run, and there it is. But I still can't figure out how to make recognize this specific position. Some certain. Command shift P, command control. Wait, was it? Shell command install code and path, git clone. Change language mode. Now why is import angry? What the hell? What is going on? Something's weird. Like, why is that there? I don't know. Appearance editor. I'm looking for, I want to see where you do. Select Docker says add. Command palette, open view, appearance. Nope. Editor layout. Nope. Explorer. I want to see where that is in the menu. I'm assuming it's in the menu. I wonder if they actually put stuff in there that's not in the menu. It'd be kind of crazy. It certainly looks that way. Oh, well, that didn't do so good. Control K M. Oh, okay. Control K M. Configure file association. Configure Python language based settings. Oh, that's interesting. I do not want to mess with that right now. Super weird. I'm freaked out about like totally messing something. Why is that there? That's annoying, is what that is. Okay, whatever.
Yeah, how... Change language mode. Surely... Yeah, it actually just says do control shift P, whatever. Oh, well. see, VS code set. Set syntax highlighting for file with no extension. I'm starting to think about like how I want to do this as a website. Um, like where, where all this stuff would come in. Yeah, so like, hope it's not a mosquito. Um, virus of codes. Actually, let me go to oops. Uh, wood on prod content. Stream notes, 11, 13. Yeah, because I mean, what you could do got to figure out if I want to get into this now or not. Site. Oh, there's nothing in my site. Look at that. Oh, you'd have to put all the date stuff in. Crap. I'm not going to mess with that right now. But yeah, I like the idea. Maybe we'll start on that soon. Because like, I like the idea of just being able to do stuff in NV Alt and then having it go. Yeah, instead of like... And I was actually thinking about making a little inter and so yeah, and so it's just they're just sex files, but I could actually keep them in the grimoire. So I could edit them through NV Alt if I wanted to. And then I could have like little interfaces like I could still use Sublime Text if I wanted to get into that, but I probably wouldn't. Like this would just be the editor. 
Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I like that a lot. Idea. Set up. NV alt to manage Hugo pages. And it's cool because they're all just text, right? I got to figure out how to do images. That's going to be the one thing that's going to be tricky. Mm. I could just have directory. Actually, it might be easier than how it is now where I could just have like an images flag that automatically builds a directory for me and then just throw the images in there and then have, have the thing assemble uh, as it moves into, into Hugo. Yeah, I really like that. And the idea of the digital garden has been in my head too a little bit. So like, that'll be cool. Um, open the command palette with command shift P search for configure display language. Ah, oh. oh, that's not what I wanted. Configure language mode. How do you do splat? Nope. Apple type splat command symbol. I don't want to copy and paste them. I want to be able to, surely you can type it. Oh, well, this is weird. I didn't know about this one. Hang on, what is this? You can also type where's the up carrot to run with the characters menu. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I don't know how that works. Oh, shift is what that is. Back up.
symbols to type. VS code. Oh, actually, you know what I want to do? Wait, can I paste that in there? Yeah, I've got, I've, I knew I had it in here somewhere. Uh, wait, where'd it go? Just go. Type Timble Splat. There you go. VS code. It's funny, everybody always does capitals, but it's not really a capital. I mean, that makes it look better on the documentation, but it's, you would actually hit shift if it was gonna be capital and it's not. I don't know what that is. Arc first, there we go. All right, so we figured out a little while ago how this stuff works, where No, actually, what we should do. I'm trying to figure out how I want to test this. So at least originally, I want, I want I need to make sure it works in the directory that it's called in. So I guess you could just symlink it out. That's what we'll do. And then, so I want to see another thing. I've come back to this page a hundred thousand times. And because it's still at the top, it is probably a thing that I should really look at and think that is going to be it. Oh, you know what I should do? Hang on a second. I want to do something. Cause so it's gonna help me a little bit in the head, which is, uh, yeah. So I think I can play. There we go. I getting in the headphones a little bit helps me. I don't know, keeping the stream somehow. I don't know, but I think Yeah. So hopefully, yep, I can hear Spotify through the thing and you can't, and, but I can still hear me doing the thing. All right, cool. It just helps me stay in the thing, I guess. I don't know.
setup requirements, sample, core helpers. The actual module is dot sample or dot sample pi. Your module package is the core focus of the repository. It should not be focused away. If your module consists of only a single file, you can place it in the root directory of your repository. Yeah, I don't know, it's just, it's funny because like, the way I'm thinking about this is, right, you want this up here and what we want is a test directory. Isn't that what they call it? Tests? Yeah, tests, okay. And so this is... Literally just typed and it's doing nothing. What the hell? We're right, just gonna reboot that. Every now and then it still does weird stuff on me. What is going on? Class snake case name test unit test test case class. Uh, if name hey we're actually coding a little bit all right run that what happens run everything's cool So how, yeah, this is the thing that I'm unsure of. Obviously these test modules must import your package module to do it. You can do that in a few ways. Expect the package to be installed in site packages. Use a simple but explicit, explicit path modification to resolve the package properly. I highly recommend the later. Requiring a developer to run setup pi dev to test also requires them to have an isolated environment set up. Yeah, don't do that. To give the individual test import context, create a test context pi file with that. Then within the individual test, import the module like so. Ah, I like this. Okay. This will always work expected regardless of installation method. Some people will assert you should distribute your that you should distribute your tests within your module itself. I disagree. Let's 
structure setup 2020. Based off this. See, I've looked at this a few different times and I just have it never. I wasn't in Python enough. Because what I think I want to do, and mine's a little different, because I want to keep. So what I should do is go to the desktop. Uh, pi. So we're going to have It's the naming of the thing that gets me a little bit. Yeah, the naming is... So snake case names, run cleaner. Well, why don't I actually do it with this snake? So what I need to have is the library would be, and I'm not sure this is the right way, but it like, I'm trying to figure out how to get to like an install, like what, what I'm looking for is like, if you're going to install a Python module, like on the command line, how about this? How's this do it? Which pip? User local then Oh, okay. So you would just set it to If it's still executable and you put it in the library, I'm just trying to figure out like where, like, how do you do stuff? Are any of these directories? No, these are all links. There's a directory. Nope. That was a new line. There's a directory. Nope. That's a new line. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Python 3, Python. Okay, so Python is a directory. Which Python. 
user lookup in Python. User, whoops. User local bin pi. There we go. Star. Does that work? Oh. User local bin pi. Star. Does that work? Yeah, look at that. Python is going to at two two seven sixteen bin Python. So that's the executable. I'm just I'm trying to figure out like what the what the best practices is for installing a script. Python command line tool. Not really what I'm looking for. Nope. How's up a perfect Python project? Hello, link bait. Pipx is a handy tool that allows you to click installation of Python command line tools. We're using it to install pip environment cookie cutter. Oh, I remember hearing about cookie cutter. Dependency management with pip event automatically creates and manages virtual environments for all your projects. I sort, sorts out inputs. I sort. Your Python inputs so you don't have to. I sort as Python utility library that sorts imports alphabetically and automatically separates them into sections. Style enforcement with flake eight. Static typing, huh? Interesting. Running Python PyTest is incredibly easy. Removing any friction of writing tests means you write more of them. I don't know how this is so much, so much better than uh, unit test. You're not making a class, I guess, but I don't know. Also, you would want two different files here. To execute it, run PyTest.
Now we've seen what an ideal project contains. We can use this. We can turn this into a template to generate a new project on single command. Pipex run. I don't know where that config stuff was going into. Dependency management. Black is uncovering the Python code formatter. I don't get what the setup config file is doing. I can run a flake. Oh, okay. So that's that settings config. It just knows to look for that settings config. Oh, uh, maybe pipe environment looks for it. Static type seem weird to me. I mean, the language, it's, I don't know. It seems like a weird thing to add into a language that doesn't have it. I don't know what the advantage is over user test or unit test. lives in the best practices module. See, now there's an error hanging out there. Super weird. So,
Yeah, so this is where I'm stuck, is... I think you would actually do the directory name as the same thing, right? But it won't let you do that. No, I guess you would call it snake caser. Yeah, so that's the name of the thing and then the action. I like this. Cause I want to be able to like just target this app with a, as the thing. And then this would be, this would be the main one. And there's a supporter or other, you know, things. Yeah. So like, it's a deployment thing, right? You could just. Well, yeah, so I guess if you, if you actually, I mean, I guess you would install the module. I'm not really sure how to do, so like I can come up with an idea about how to do like a command line, like just a one-off Python file, but how do you like make them, how do you install a command line? I mean, I think on how you do it, you just do pip install and the thing, right? At this point in time, it'll be easier to install packages by other means. Work with multiple versions of Python installed. Pip install local module. So how do I run to install the below, not using pip version, but the local version? Pip will search my first setup.py, build a wheel, then install it. The problem with using the E flag for pip install suggested and the comments in this answer is it requires that the original source directory stay in place for as long as you want to use the module. That's great if you're a developer working from the source, but if you're just trying to install a package, it's the wrong choice.
pip supports installing directly from GitHub repos using a variety of protocols, among others. See the docs are linked for examples. Okay, that's cool. That's what I'm looking for. So how do you do, so what does a Python setup file look like? How to package a simple Python project. We'll show you how to add necessary files and structures to create the package, how to build a package, how to upload to Python package index. Create this project locally, create the following. Once you create the structure, we want the commands in this tutorial with the top level filter. So we should be see into that. Now create a handful of files to package up this project for distribution. Create the new files listed below. Here we go. Oh, good Lord. This is a build script for setup tools. It tells setup tools about your package, such as the name and version, as well as code files include. Open setup by and the following content. Common classical. I need to be calm. Banana right now. Three on E. Yeah. Update the package name to include username. This ensures you right. So import setup tools. Alright, so Let's do this, this, whoops.
Oh yeah, you could do ah, you could do some interesting stuff with this once you start playing around with it. Yeah, you could do some coding stuff in here. Um You copy it deselects. Interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. That's new to me. Huh. No, I don't think I like that. Because often I do copy, delete, and then whatever. I don't know. I'll have to see about that. You can probably turn that off. You a day ago. Oh, I don't know if I like this either. What is that? That's that git thing. It's a problem with installing all those things. It's like also now it's doing all this crap. No, I don't like that at all. How do we turn that off? Like that really doesn't, I'm not seeing how that's useful. I'm not saying it's not, I just don't see how that's useful. Uh, oh, well, whatever, screw it, we'll leave it on for now. Okay, so we're just gonna paste this. Oh, wow, that's so weird to me. It makes me think it broke. gets lens yeah I don't want any of this shit get command palette nope how do we turn off extensions I'm gonna guess this is what we want to go away. How do we turn it off? It seems to weird to me that you can't. Turn it off here. Prime palette settings, extensions. Is 
get lens disable reload required no problem All that stuff went away, right? I'm not sure I like the block either. I usually use a... I want that opening. Yeah, I usually use the line. I like the line better. Cursor. Controls the cursor. Line thin. That certainly does not look like line thin to me. Wonder if that's a theme thing. Blank. Where it smooth is. Let's see if this solid. See if that affects it. Yeah, see that affects it. Set settings. Cursor surrounding lines controls the minimum number of visible leading and trailing lines surrounding the cursor. Controls when cursor surrounding lines should be enforced. Cursor width. Controls the width of the cursor when editor current style set the line. Uh, that's what it is. We go to line thin. Wait, does block outline work? No, someone's got it pinned. How about it's that theme? Uh, oops. Okay, T theme, yeah. No? So it's an extension. I'll bet. Look at that jumpiness. I don't like that either. Like, just be there instantly. You can be there instantly. I don't need to see a transition path. I feel like I, I feel like a bunch of that crap got installed.
Turn that off. Spell right. Multilingual. Open any folder or repository inside of Docker. Take advantage of it. No, don't need that. Multilingual offline lightweight spell checker. Okay, yeah, that's cool. I like that. No. PowerShell. Postgres is cool. One Dark Pro. Theme, 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 markdown theme, markdown notes. No. Markdown links. No. Markdown all in one. Not right now. Jupyter Notebooks will keep, maybe. Disable. Foam. Disable. Docker. Disable. Community material theme, whatever. Bash IDE. Eh. Bash debug, atomic one dark. Okay, so those are all the installed themes. All right, quit. Hey, something fixed it. No, I'm still there. Link is cool. Line is cool. Better highlight, hide cursor in overview ruler. Controls how the cursor be hidden in the overview ruler. Multi cursor merge overlapping. There's so much stuff. Speed with enable seeding. Search from this word. Okay. Ah, uh, that's probably what it was. I turned it on when I was messing around with it. Yep. Now we're better. And it's not deselecting on highlight on copy anymore. I'm much happier. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you install those extensions at your own risk. All right, so we've got all this stuff. Bash test versions. We're gonna delete the. Uh, actually, that's good to GitHub. Okay, those are all cool. So these are all good. So we're going to delete these. And we're going to delete the test arena.
So just leave those there. What am I doing? Um, all right, so it, this needs to have a setup. I put it, it makes it impossible to drop it into the root and I can't get it to the root. That's not a thing. Like, how do you do that? Run, delete, copy, open, select. Yes, code, make file in root dir of project of it would figure it out, but whatever. You can right click an explorer area, pull the last folder and select new folder from the context menu pops up or collapse the folder view then expand it. Oh, but if you click this, I swear I clicked down there before. But also, yeah, whatever. Okay, okay, that's fine. Port setup tools with open readme as read file handle long description equals have to read. Okay. That's cool. I got that file. That's cool. Name. Snake case names. Alan W. Smith. Whatever. Set up fine packages, classifiers, Python 3, license OSI approved. Okay, sure. Operating system, OS independent, probably. For author, you to identify the author of the package. Description, short ones in the summary of the package, long description. URL. Packages. 
is a list of all Python import packages that should be included with the distribution package. What is the distribution package? Is that going to tell us that in a minute? Fun in a minute. Because the index of pips of initial metadata, in this case, it's only compatible with Python 3, it's licensed under MIT, and is OS independent. You should always include at least which versions of Python your package works on. Creating a readme, okay, we got that. Create a license, very important for every package in Python. Package index have a license. Creating distribution archives. The next step is to generate a distribution package. These archives are uploaded to the package index and can be installed by pip. I do not want to do that. pip install user upgrade. If you have trouble installing these, see installing packages. Oh, okay, so that doesn't. Wait a minute. All right, hang on. So we're going to try. Um. Here, let's do this. Open in Finder, reveal in Finder. I'm gonna get that out of there for a minute because I wanna see what happens if we try and just do Yeah, pip install op my package unit. Pip will search for setup pi, build a wheel, and then install it. Okay, so print here. It's all we're gonna do. Actually, what we should do is yield traditional hello world. <laughs> Even better, hang on, it should be snake cased. Hello world, right? We're doing a snake case thing. Oh, actually, we already got a terminal here, right? I'm not in a virtual environment, so pip install snake case names. Actually, could not find a version that satisfies the requirement snake case names for version matching no, matching distribution found. Python pip three is really what we want to do, but I guess.
Cannot find a version that satisfies the requirements snake case names from versions none. Python setup pi file. I don't know what the minimum is. This song is one of those where they fuzz all the speakers. Ooh, that's cool. I'm on the second page. Packaging Python projects. An introduction to disk utils. Really good form of installing Python modules. No. Script is usually quite simple. There are no arbitrary limits what you can do. Unlike what I was saying, blah, blah. Let's see if you supply keyword arguments setup functions. Create a source distribution for this module. To create a source di distribution for this module, you create a setup script, setup pi, containing the above code and run this in the terminal. For Windows, you do that. Creates an archive file containing the script in your module. The archive file would name foo, blah, blah, blah. Okay. If an end user wishes to install your foo module, they'd have download it and do that. Python. Well, maybe it'll do. And let's just go back to this one before we jump too far. Many packages have command line entry points. Those are where we're headed. Usually you want to be able to access them from anywhere, but installing packages and their dependencies to the same global environment can cause version conflicts and break dependencies and operating system packages. Yep, okay. Pipex solves this by creating a virtual environment for each package while also ensuring that the package's applications are accessible through the directory in your path. Oh, interesting. This allows each package to be upgraded or installed without causing conflicts to other packages. And allows you to safely run the program from anywhere. Aha! This is what I'm looking for. 
PyPack is installed with pip. Okay. Python 3. Okay, so. Py. Setting up a CLI tool. Creating an This is finally I found the thing that I've been looking for, I think. I still haven't found what I'm looking for, but maybe I have. Alright, so we're just gonna do this. Ensures the path the TLI application directory is on your path. Okay, cool. Let's just do this. The script user path is installed. Considering add that to your path, if you first press this warning, no, no, no. script puppet installed. So which Python 3, use your local bin Python 3, user local bin Python 3, kicks over to 3761, is that the one, 37? The script user path is installed in We'll look at that in a second. Unless this takes care of that. Success added. Consider adding shell completions for pipx. You'll need to open a new terminal and relog in to create path changes to take effects. Otherwise, you're ready to go. Okay, cool. So new terminal, new terminal, and VS Code, get rid of that, come back, come back. You can now install packages with pipx install and access the patch packages entry points from anywhere. Also allows you to install and run the latest version of a CLI tool in a temporary ephemeral directory. For example, pipx run calcemu. That's cool. 
whatever. We'll just do it. Wow. I'm terrified of this. Somebody made Calse. Okay. Screenshots. We're in the screenshots. I might put on the better headphones for this one. Okay, so Python CLI entry point. I feel like the second one's going to be the winner. Entry points are mechanisms for installing distribution to advertise components. It provides to be discovered and used by other code. When pip installs the distribution, it will create command line wrapper for each entry point. Sweet. The applications can use Entry points to load plugins. Entry point file format was originally developed to allow packages built with setup tools to provide integration point metadata at runtime. It's now defined as a PyPAP interoperability specification in order to build other tools other than the uh, data model. Conceptually, entry point is def entry point is defined by three properties: a group that an entry point belongs to. For instance, the group console scripts is for entry points referring to functions which can be used as a command, while pigments.styles is a group for classes defining pigment styles. Makes sense. The name identifies the entry point where the group within the group. Precise meaning of this is for consumer. For the console scripts, the name of the entry point is the command that will be used to launch it. Got it. We found it. Within distribution, entry points should be unique. If different distributions provide the same name, the consumer decides how to handle such conflict. Object reference points to the Python object. Is either in the form of interop interoperable module or interoperable module object adder. Each of the parts delimited by dots and the colon is valid in Python interpreter. It's intended to be looked up like this.
within the disk directory. Okay. I'm tired. <sighs> This is cool. This is cool. I'm not gonna do it right now. I'm, I've, I've hit the tired wall. I can't focus anymore on it. I can focus on that mosquito though. I don't like this mosquito. This is cool. This I've been looking for this for a long time. Or I've been. I tried to look at this several times over the wilds um, and just never did it, never found it. Command key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, let's mess around with this on just a little bit. So arg parse. I don't know if I want to mess around with this anymore. Might be done for the night. I don't know what I want to do though. Hey, B cut animated GIFs. That's funny. I didn't make a lot of progress, but I made a lot of progress other days like that. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do anything else. Oh, let's make a let's get a failing test going. How about that? Oh, oh where was that? Pi structure, there we go. What did that guy call it? Components, I think he called it components. I'm never gonna find that. No, oh, and I've seen that page 150 times, and now I can't find it. Hitchhiker's Guide, I think, right? Context.py. Most path, absolute join, dir name, file. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, it's weird. So I don't even know now if you need this.
because all the time when I was looking through all this stuff, I thought you'd just have a, a Python file that you needed to hit. Might not need this if you're doing a CLI tool. Which is what I'm doing. Look at entry points first. Okay, so how does he do? Structure of code is key. Revy only code modules. If you look like your code, your module name is spam, but even under underscore should be module name. However, whatever. Very bad. Better. Best. Yeah, I kind of like that. Need to read that whole thing. Um, This is one that I still struggle with. I think it was on this page just the other day. Obviously, you can fix that if you ignore somehow. Part of it. Get ignore. So that. Distribute config files suffixed with, for example, original. Yeah, still. Three laws of config dynamics. That sounds good. That's probably my last one. Possibly there's no getting answer to this. It seems that you need to store this data somewhere safe. It needs to be desired for reverses. This applies to Yeah, I don't actually read.
Yeah, I, I still like I like the idea of universal or environmental variables a little bit, but it's still kind of weird to think about. Like, I don't have a good way to set them up. First config file was born. It was pretty good. Actually, once your app requires more than a few config variables, you probably end up storing them all in the shell. Include like, congratulations, you just created an unversioned config file. You've also discovered the first law config first first announced. Config values can be transferred from one form to another, but can neither be created nor destroyed. Funny. Recently started paying more attention to what goes under reference. Make sure it's not just a skeleton book includes all the config rails required to start the app. If you want to override any of those variables, you set a local. This is the beginning of a new style of reference conf. Some other thing happens with front ends. Where we not always create a development.json file or something, okay. Length of a perfect config file and development value exactly equal to zero. Use git crypt to encrypt the values so that we can commit them to git but they cannot be accessed without whitelisted white PGP keys. Moving config to environment rules does not change the problem. Regularly check if you have unnecessary config values and make sure that you can, your app can start with no config at all. Right. Yeah, so there's no good way to do it. All right. I think let's do it. I still like this interface a lot. So, cool. All right, that'll do it for now. See y'all. Take it easy.